Hi everyone, it's Tom and in today's video I'm going to show you how I went about building the scenic base for my Mark IV Centaur. Uh, the Mark IV Centaur from Tamir is 135th scale and I built it in my previous video and if you've not checked it out yet I'll put the link in the description below and it should be popping up in the top right about now as well. I took huge inspiration for this uh, for this base from Mig Ammo's How to uh, Make Vignettes book and of course Uncle Night Shift and I've got a few tips and tricks from uh, a few other YouTubers as well, which uh, was really helpful. The first thing I had to think about then was the composition, and I wanted to use the one thirds, two thirds rule. By that, I mean I wanted the tank to cover two thirds of the base, and I wanted the railway crossing to cover one third of the base. For the track, I used German Railways uh, crossing, uh, from Trumpeter and technically this would have been uh, well this is based in Normandy and they would have had bullhead track but I think I can get away with it for this diorama uh, it was the only track that I could find available at the time it went together pretty simple and there was, uh, there was no real issues the base was made out of uh, foam I bought from eBay and I had a few offcuts as well lying around so I used that just to uh, heighten the profile of the diorama because I thought a flat diorama would be pretty boring. So a bit of PVA glue and then weighted down with a few products and it was dry in a few hours. For the road, I used AK's construction foam, which was reasonably priced uh, and really easy to use and uh, malleable. And again, just checking the uh, composition, making sure I was happy. The tank was nice and raised uh, and it was all looking exactly how I envisioned. Before I did begin uh, carving out the road though, I did chamfer off a little bit of the foam underneath uh, just to help the embankment uh, look a little bit better once I applied the sculptor mold. With the AK construction foam, uh, it was just a simple case of uh, marking out the brickwork. Now what you can see here is quite large for my taste, so I did go back and uh, rescribe this and I'll, I'll show you that shortly. But initially I scraped out some bricks uh, for the road using a, just a sharp blade and then with some, uh, I've got some AK tools as well, I just carved out some of the brickwork and it just gave it a little bit of superficial damage as well uh, just to separate the foam up a little bit. I then ran a toothpick through it as well uh, just to give it a little bit more depth and add a little bit more damage. And then just to widen those gaps, I used one of the other tools uh, just to punch the foam down. And it was, it was actually quite satisfying. So uh, I, did, I did enjoy this and I had no problems uh, rescribing it. And then just to finish it off, I just rolled some screwed tin foil over just to give it a little bit of texture to the bricks. Uh, so obviously it's a road and they'd be getting wear and tear. But like I said, the brickwork was a little bit too big for the scale. So I rescribed it, added some curves and uh, made the bricks a lot smaller, which I think looks a lot better. This was applied again with some, uh, or stuck down again with some PVA glue, put into place and then just weighted down again uh, with some products and in a few hours it was dry again. For the groundwork then I used some sculptor mold. Uh, this is the first time I'd uh, ever used it and I took inspiration from Luke Towen uh, and also Everard Junction, a railway modeler and it's really easy to use. I was a little bit apprehensive, but it's, I think it works on a two to one ratio. You put 2% of, it's like paper, like cut up paper. Uh, it's, it works like plaster and then put some water in and then you've got probably about 30 minutes of uh, play time. I did do it in stages and as it starts to dry out, you can add a little bit of water and just to uh, smoothen it off as well, uh, but that wouldn't make a difference. So after a few days that was dry and then I came around with my blade and just tidied up the woodwork, uh, just cutting away any excess that was a little bit too big and then I gave that a little sand down as well and just to smarten it up and, and tidy it up in general. And here it is with the sculptor mold. There was a few cracks in places but I'll be putting a mud base down so I wasn't really too concerned. Um, I, was, I was pretty happy with it. Uh, the balsa wood round the uh, sides for the borders was looking good as well. For the mud then I used some sharp sand 
um, some acrylic mud from MIG and some pigments as well as some dry seagrass and this was just all mixed together. It was, uh, you did it to make a nice thick paste and when I was satisfied I could then uh, paint it on basically and uh, lather it on. Again I worked in small segments as you can see up in the top left where I've already applied it uh, in between the railroad road tracks and on the left of the uh, vignette. Uh, and it's just a case of putting it on the sand in there, the dried seagrass, the pigments, it all adds to the texture. And just to help speed up the drying time as well, I sprinkled on some uh, sharp sand as well. But that also just gives that extra little bit of texture as well. So it, it just, it looks good. When it came to the ballast then, I bought some AK uh, Big Rocks. Uh, it said it could be used for 135th scale, but in hindsight, I think these may have been a little bit too big. Uh, I think it's a new product. I would maybe have preferred something uh, a little bit smaller, but hey ho, uh, I think it looks all right. It, it worked, uh, worked quite well. Now my background uh, before modeling was railroading as a teenager. Uh, used to love uh, model railways. So I'm quite familiar with how the, the ballast works, so it was really nice. It's probably one of the reasons why I wanted to include um, a railroad crossing in this diorama as well, just because I was having the urge to do some uh, model railway. In. I also added some uh, dried seagrass and some stones from my garden as well, just to give it some more texture. And this was all secured in place with some diluted PVA glue. It was just a case of putting some PVA glue in a pot, applying some water till it was nice and runny, uh, and then applying it with a pipette and it went nice and solid. So as you can see here, we've got a good base then from what we can work with uh, just to apply some static grass. When it came to the static grass application, this was the first time uh, I'd ever used it. I bought a cheap uh, applicator from eBay and I didn't dilute the uh, PVA glue. It was just a case of uh, putting it on straight from the pot so it was nice and thick so it would help it uh, stand up. I blobbed it on, I worked in uh, small sections again as well and like you can see with the static grass applicator I had I think 10 millimeter and 6 millimeter static grass so it was uh, a little bit of a mixture as I didn't want a bowling green and um, I did want to mix it up. And once it had been applied, it was just then a case of putting down the applicator and shaking it up uh, and just getting the, getting the excess off to reuse again. Although this is a cheap applicator, I think it worked quite well for me. Uh, it did take a couple of um, goings over, should I say. Um, but I thought for £16 from eBay, uh, you can't go wrong. And it just needed a little help with a, with a brush to make it stand up. But... It was definitely worth it for uh, for the first time. In regard to the railroad crossing then, uh, I just used some uh, strips of balsa wood just to um, make that crossing uh, to help vehicles get across, not, not necessarily tanks, uh, just normal vehicles, uh, as it's they would have been quite common uh, back in the day, and they still are sometimes. I did get some uh, ammo, some wildflowers, and I think in hindsight, I would have applied these right at the end. I would have painted them uh, separately and then applied them th th at the very end. But you can do it this way like I did, but like I said, in hindsight, I would have added this feature at the end. So with that said and done, it was time to get it into the air booth ready for priming. When it came to priming, I like to use Mr. Surfacer uh, 1500 Black. I used a 0.4 needle and sprayed it at 18 PSI. Uh, I took a couple of coats, not going mad, but just to uniform the, uh, the, whole, the whole base. And this is a technique that uh, Night Shift uses, and I wanted to give it a go as well. And I was pretty satisfied with the result. It is what it is, um, but it, it can cast some fake shadows. When it came to painting the model then, uh, I began by painting the grass, the static grass, and initially I used XF60 Dark Yellow, and I was just playing around really. Uh, I wanted to cause lots of depth, lots of different variation, 
Uh, I lighten this dark yellow up with a little bit of uh, XF2 white as well, uh, just sprayed lightly across the top of the grass. But in my opinion, it was uh, a little bit too light. So then I got some XF13, some JA green, and just sprayed that uh, underneath the XF dark 60, the dark yellow, sorry. Uh, and again, it just created variation, uh, which I thought was quite good. I did have a, another green as well, which I mixed with the uh, with a JA green, and I just sprayed that on uh, gently the uh, the flat green, and I think it looked it was looking all right. It was looking uh, it was looking pretty decent. With all that said and done, then I was pretty happy how the grass turned out. Um, it was it was looking all right, but the next thing to work on was the groundwork, and because of this, I needed it to match the texture that I'd used on the tank which was AK's uh, diorama texture paint. So initially I went uh, around the mud with some uh, some buff and this worked quite well. I wasn't too fussed that it was looking uh, quite dry and arid because uh, later on I was going to use some washers uh, just, to, uh, just to dampen it down a little bit. I then sprayed some highlights as well with it uh, with some uh, deck tan and this again just added some more variation and it made the grass start to pop a little bit. Everything was a little bit uniform, but like I said, the washes were gonna tone that down. I used some Mr. Hobby H66 and some XF53 for the stones, uh, just to make them gray. Uh, again, I just had a little bit of playing around. I've got loads of uh, gray paints uh, in my stash. So I, I was just having a little play around and seeing what worked best for the ballast. In the end then I went for some XF53 neutral grey plus some XF24 dark grey, uh, just mixed it up and again just added variation. This would be toned down by washers as well. Before I got painting uh, the road I did give it some superficial damage because it was looking a little bit too new for my liking. Uh, obviously this would have been a road that would have been in use uh, during the war, there would have been tanks uh, by the Germans. There would have been vehicles using it as well. So yeah, I wanted to do some superficial damage. When it came to the uh, to the road then, I used some uh, some grey, some uh, neutral grey from uh, Vallejo. And again, this dried out quite nicely and uh, just neutralised uh, the entire path work. I keep talking about variation, but it's something that I think really makes a diorama pop. Um, I had a, a palette of uh, some toned down colours, and again, I just used them uh, different areas uh, on the cobblestones, on the path, on the pavement, uh, just to add some variety. Obviously my juices were flowing at this point as well and I thought the ballast needs a little bit of variety as well so I took a few, um, some neutral tones and uh, applied them to the ballast as well. A few of these would be hidden so I just practiced on some that would be beneath the boards but if I was satisfied I did uh, give a few more of the uh, rocks a uh, paint as well. When it came to the rail then I used burnt umber for the, for the main rail. Uh, this went down quite nicely. I did go over the top of the rail with some silver where the wheels would uh, be causing friction with the track. But for the main rail, I used uh, some Vallejo Burnt Umber. For the seats then, that's what the rail sits in on top of the sleeper. Uh, I used some uh, Vallejo Rust and some Light Rust and I used the... Uh, wet blending method. What I mean by this is I apply the rust uh, quite watered down uh, from my uh, from a palette, uh, applied it onto the seats and then I went over with some light rust straight away just touching it ever so slightly uh, just to mix it up uh, and I think it came out quite nice. For the sleepers, I used the oil brushes. I used dark brown 
and the sludge and again just wanted to uh, create some variety as well uh, it gives a nice wooden texture uh, texture to it uh, the oil paints take a little bit of time to dry uh, which was no issue uh, as I was taking my time painting these and I was being extra careful not to paint the uh, the ballast and then I used the buff as well just to uh, go across and instead of using the oil brusher applicator I just uh, touched a fine uh, paint brush onto it and it just gave like some sort of chipping effect where the wood would have been worn uh, worn away uh, through use and age. And here you can see how the rail's finished. I uh, painted some silver over the top and yeah, it's looking good. Now, when it came to the washers, I used some panel line, some fresh mud, some loose ground and some rain marks effect. And I used them in different areas. For example, the panel line I used on the track on the inside, this is where the grime would be from the engine as it's rolling over the track. Uh, I apply this quite liberally, liberally uh, especially on the, uh, on the stones in the center and um, the sleepers. The loose ground, I applied on the side of the banking or areas where it would uh, it, it would dry intermittently so I used the loose ground on, on the slope I used the fresh mud down in the lower grounds and I used the rain mark effects at the top where it would uh, it would probably dry the quickest again I used the wet blending method and again this just allows it all to soak in and uh, blend together and when it's dried it gives a uh, nice natural look To finish off the pavement then I got some sharp sand as well, uh, I brushed that in, in in between the cracks as well and I think this really made the pavement pop as well, uh, it was looking really good. I used some pigment fixer to uh, keep it together and I think it toned down the colours as well for the variation which, uh, which again made it look really good in my opinion. Finished the groundwork off then I got a um, few colors together and I just painted some of the uh, the rocks just to make them stand out uh, and again just add a little bit more variation uh, because the rocks wouldn't have, maybe not the same color as the as the groundwork and I think this works really well it really makes the uh, the diorama pop a few final touches was to um, paint the foliage and like I said I think in hindsight I would have applied these at the end, I would have painted them while they were still uh, on their little spruce so to speak and then applied them to the diorama but that being said I think it uh, came out quite well. A few finishing touches consisted of painting the side of the, uh, of the base black in XF1. The railroad crossing, the wooden work, that was uh, painted in the same manner as what the sleepers were, just using a light brown uh, and uh, any excess was taken away using a paper towel. I did go over it with the uh, shader grime from Ammo, uh, as just where the, uh, the train would cross and any grime, any oil stains uh, would be left on the track as well, just to add some extra effect. I didn't uh, show painting the minifigures as this was my first time but I was pretty pleased how they came out and I got some uh, small 0.4mm wire to uh, attach to the uh, radio that he's holding which was a nice little touch. And that was the diorama complete or the base. Uh, I really enjoyed building this, it was my first proper time and I think it went well. If you've got any comments please leave them down below, any constructive criticism I'm always happy to hear. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Please, if you're not done so already, consider subscribing, liking this video if you enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.